Hi, everyone. Welcome to our channel, Ken. Douglas McGregor asserts that the individual in question is mentally unstable. Specifically, he is discussing the prospect of effectively initiating conflict with Russia, which many fail to grasp. According to McGregor, deploying conventional military units into western Ukraine would inevitably lead to war with Russia, a stance repeatedly emphasized by President Putin. Putin has adamantly stated his unwillingness to tolerate external interference. While he doesn't seek confrontation with NATO, he has warned that any NATO member deploying organized forces into eastern or western Ukraine for combat against Russians would trigger war. McGregor suggests a possibility that Macron's public statement was intended to prompt other NATO members to distance themselves, a scenario that has indeed unfolded with most rejecting the notion, including the United States. This refusal, McGregor argues, might have been the intent behind Macron's statement, as otherwise it lacks logical coherence. He does not confirm or deny the presence of British and American special ops forces in small numbers on Ukrainian soil. However, he acknowledges their potential involvement in various attacks, including drone strikes at sea and missile attacks, with purported assistance from the British SAS. He mentions the potential role of British special ops elements in Mr. Zelensky's affairs, but refrains from confirming further details. Regarding the possibility of being considered a co belligerent and he suggests that such arguments could be made based on recent events. However, he underscores that President Putin has never desired a conflict with the United States or its European allies. He emphasizes the lack of integrated air defenses along the eastern border of Western Europe, which could result in significant losses if a conflict escalates. He warns about the growing air defense capabilities in various regions, which could challenge traditional air supremacy doctrines. He indicates a sobering realization among Western Western leaders regarding the implications of potential military confrontations and notes the reluctance of countries like Germany to engage in a war against Russia. The colonel believes that it was crucial for President Putin to unequivocally clarify that any attack on Russian territory could prompt a response, including the use of nuclear weapons. He argues that possessing nuclear capabilities primarily serves the purpose of safeguarding territorial integrity. By delivering this message, Putin aimed to dispel any doubts regarding Russia's response to aggression. The colonel views this as a decisive move to settle the issue and suggests that it likely influenced figures like Schultz to reconsider their stances. Regarding recent remarks about the world being better off without Russia, the colonel dismisses them as nonsensical and attributes them to sheer ignorance. He expresses disbelief that anyone would entertain such thoughts and suggests that the sentiment is not representative of most people particularly those of Polish origin. He criticizes the endorsement of such views, attributing it to a minority with vested interests in undermining Russia. He finds the reported leaks about CIA bases intriguing, suggesting that such disclosures often signal the approaching conclusion of engagements. He anticipates a gradual withdrawal from the region as tensions ease, viewing the leaks as a precursor to such actions. There is no doubt about it. She is resolute in her intentions. It's crucial to recognize her ideological stance she aligns with globalist neoconservative ideals, driven by a fervent determination to dismantle perceived adversaries. While Russia isn't inherently an enemy of the American people, she perceives it as such, along with Ukraine, which she seeks to obliterate. The staggering casualties and destruction in Ukraine, with over a million affected and hundreds of thousands dead, reflect the severity of the situation. Under Zelensky's rule, Ukrainians live in constant fear under a regime that mirrors the oppressive tactics of the NKKVD. Ukraine, as a nation, has been devastated, yet she remains indifferent. While some of her assertions regarding naval forces in the Black Sea might hold merit, the significance of surface vessels to Russia is minimal compared to its submarine capabilities. Furthermore, Russia's military strength presently rivals that of the early 1980s and may even expand further as evidenced by potential troop mobilizations. However, such measures should ideally remain unnecessary if diplomatic negotiations prevail. President Putin's recent remarks, particularly in his interview with Tucker Carlson, underscore his openness to dialogue and resolution. It's not a matter of Russian weakness, but rather a recognition of the futility and devastation wrought by continued conflict. Putin seeks an end to hostilities, highlighting the importance of diplomatic engagement to avoid further escalation.
Many individuals indeed harbor what you might turn as an obsessive viewpoint, and this sentiment extends to retired four-star generals and senior officers within the U.S. Army forces. They often express similar sentiments due to their affiliations and financial ties with various entities, including governmental institutions and media outlets, which are ultimately influenced by a particular ideological faction within the ruling class. These entities, often referred to as Western oligarchs, exert significant influence by financially supporting retired officers and shaping their narratives to align with their interests. The underlying premise of the proxy war was built on the assumption of Russia's weakness and its purported inability to withstand Western pressure. It was believed that by destabilizing Russia, the Putin regime could be toppled, driven by the notion that the Russian population did not support its leadership, a notion that has proven to be false. Despite the stark realities contradicting these assumptions, proponents of this viewpoint remain steadfast, unwilling to deviate from their ideological stance. The ruling class the U.S. dominating Western Europe and the United States is characterized by a fervent ideological commitment, regardless of the inaccuracies or falsehoods inherent in their beliefs. This unwavering dedication underscores their determination to uphold and perpetuate their ideological narrative initiative, regardless of its validity. The operation you outlined ultimately aligns with the required objectives. However, one of the fundamental assumptions guiding Israeli actions is the belief that any action taken against Arab entities is justified as they are viewed as inferior, echoing sentiments expressed by Prime Minister Netanyahu. This perspective absolves Israeli actions from being labeled as war crimes as they are perceived as serving the interests of the Israeli people. Secondly, there's the assumption that Arab states are too weak to mount significant resistance with pressing domestic issues and the need to maintain internal stability and order. They're perceived as unwilling to risk engaging in warfare. Furthermore, neighboring Arab states are seen as affluent and content, unlikely to jeopardize their stability by intervening on behalf of Gaza or the West Bank. Additionally, there's the ongoing buildup of Israeli forces along the southern Lebanon border, indicating potential plans to exploit temporary ceasefires in Gaza to initiate conflict with Hezbollah. The recent bombings in northern Lebanon suggest a widening of the conflict, which could prompt other parties to reconsider their stance and intervene. Israel appears confident in its perceived leverage over the United States government, particularly regarding its control over Washington's policies and military capabilities. This confidence extends to the expectation of support from Asr and naval forces in potential conflicts, such as engagements with Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. The difference between previous events and potential future developments lies in the Israeli populace's steadfast belief that there is no alternative to secure clearing their territory by eliminating perceived threats, including those they deem as threats to Jewish existence. Consequently, they are committed to clearing Israel and its environs of any perceived dangers, a campaign that enjoys widespread support among the Israeli population. They are banking heavily on external support, particularly from us, to bolster their efforts. However, the reactions of neighboring Arab states, notably Turkey and Egypt, remain pivotal. Turkey's recent engagements with Egypt suggest a readiness to assert influence in the region, particularly concerning former Ottoman territories like Egypt. If Israel proceeds with incursions into southern Lebanon, the response of Iran becomes crucial. It's unlikely that Iran would passively witness the destruction of Hezbollah and southern Lebanon, 